Welcome to the Ministerial Training Program, a program designed, inspired, and teaching us in the Center for Sacred Studies. I'm Jyoti, the spiritual director of this beautiful church that preserves indigenous ways of prayer. The mystery has been studied from the beginning of time, and it's been revered, it's been written about. Many have tried to describe it, many pray to it, many serve it, but what is the mystery? In my world, the mystery would be an intelligence that I'm making a relationship to. It would be something that knows all. It would be an energy that influences all, infuses all. It knows itself, and we're part of it. So if you've come this far in the story, then if I can intrigue you just a little bit longer, I'd like to share with you another part of the story that seems to be awakening upon our planet. About 30 some odd years ago, there was a shaking on the earth. It was quite remarkable because it woke up a populace of people all around the world. And since that time, many of us have discovered each other and found each other. But when it first woke up, we didn't know anything about the mystery. We didn't know anything except what we had been enculturated to know. We had habits we followed. We got up in the morning and we did things to take care of our day. We didn't follow our dreams too much. In fact, we didn't think too much about them at all. And then they became very vivid and they began to touch us somehow. They began to dialogue with us somehow. They began to open the door to the mystery. In that process, something started to arise inside of us. The old people would call it the awakening had begun. Something started to shake around inside of our systems, and at first what it did was just push out all the repressed material that had been placed there from old wounds or bad situations we had had to go through in our lives. hard biography of some sort, and possibly if you dug deep enough in your own self-discovery, you would also get down to the root of the tree of your family line in the generations and some of what had been repressed or not touched in the ways it needed touching in order to grow or evolve. So we began our self-discovery, we began our therapy, we began our self-healing, we began to study ourselves, get to know ourselves. As they say on the Delphi Oracle, it says just above its door, to know thyself is to know God in the universe. And we began to think that this was something we found to be true. So evolution marched through us, and as it did, it tumbled us on down a path, and it began to wake up other memories inside of us. It began to be spoken from the people uh, around the world that we call the original people, the indigenous people the First Nation people. They have a way of life that teaches us how to walk with life and how to relate to creation, how to understand creation and and how to listen to it so it can help us in our daily lives. They have a way of prayer so that everything that is of life is sacred and seen that way. They have a way of honoring and respecting all of life because they see how connected we are. Now there was a community called Kayumari. And we started to catch some of these inspirations, these whisperings. We began to have some of the elders find us, as they say. When the student is ready, the teacher appears. Well, it appeared for us that way in more than one case. People from the Amazon, people from Mexico, people from the North American native lands, what we call Turtle Island. They began to come up a mountain where we had been brought to and opened up our first center. They began to help us remember ceremony. They began to teach us about some of the very old ways of prayer that aren't necessarily about asking for what we need, but more about thanking for what we've got. They began to show us a way of life that helped us learn how to flow with it instead of grab for it. They helped us remember a way of honoring ourselves and in doing that, um, come more at peace with ourselves. In that process, we had a visitation from the great lady of this creation, and she gave us a formula called Stargate, and we opened up a mystery school. That was 11 years ago. They came because we wanted to learn how to be 
authentic with ourselves. We wanted to be able to be messy uh, while we looked at these things we had forgotten about that needed healing, while we remembered who we were in our own authenticity, when we let the false self slide off of us and stood up and sat down inside ourselves like that. But we came to understand that we were ministers of a prayer that was marching across the planet, a prayer of evolution, a prayer for world peace, a prayer for what the Hopis would call the fifth world of unity. For they say that we're standing, you know, right now on a crossroads where the road has come to a split in itself. And on this side, there is a, they represented a picture of that path by a body with no head on it. And that meant that the head uh, was leading the way and it wasn't connected to its heart anymore. And they said that road was going to lead to its own self-destruction. If you take a moment and pop on the television, you might just see what they meant. Now there's another path, and that path, they show the same body, but the head is connected to it. So the heart and the head are finding its way to a path of unity. And I have an old grandmother out of Oregon. She's with the Rogue River tribe, and she's 85 years old. And she said, the most important path we need to take right now is the one that leads from our head to our heart. Just that 14 inches, she said, from the head to the heart. That's the most important journey we can take right now. In our school, that's what we've been learning to do. And as everything else, it's evolved just like we have. Uh, and now it's becoming an online school because it's getting more difficult for people to travel. It's getting more difficult for us to expend that kind of cash on oil resources. It's getting more difficult because just driving a car creates harm to some of the ecology of this planet. Flying airplanes adds to some of what is taking the breath out of the earth uh, or soiling it in some way. And so another level of our school is appearing for you and you're one of the first to visit it. And it's an online ministerial training program. And she's inspired us yet again in order for us to bring to you through cyberspace uh, a way of holding a community a way of connecting with each other, and a way of turning your lens of perception so you can dialogue with creation again and take time to get to know yourself and in that space find your own authenticity. One of the things that came out of this was, uh, and out of our community was about four years ago, the Center for Sacred Studies. and They've asked me to be the spiritual director for this church. And it's a church that preserves and sustains indigenous ways of life. And I had no idea actually when this seed came for us to plant what it was going to grow. But out of it has come an amazing process that we call the International Council of 13 Indigenous Grandmothers. If you want to know more about them, you can get online and pop over and visit them at their website, which is grandmotherscouncil.com. You can also continue to investigate further into the ministerial program that you're looking at right now because Many of these grandmothers and other grandmothers that aren't part of this council but that are becoming connected and involved with the council from all over the world, from New Zealand, from uh, Australia, from all, all different parts of the world are coming to speak to you. And we're going to have a grandmother's corner where you can sit and listen to some of their stories and some of the ways their prophecy is saying that we need to be in this changing time we're living in right now. One of them is Rita Blumenstein. She's Yupik. She's from the Arctic Circle. She had the story that when she was nine years old, her grandmother sat her down and told her that when she was old like her with gray hair, that she would be called to sit on a council of 13 grandmothers. And she made 13 bundles with sacred stones and eagle plumes in them, and she gave them to little Rita and told her to hold on to them, keep them in a very safe way. And when it was time, she would know and she would sit down on this council and she should gift each of the grandmothers with this bundle and sit down herself and know that she was standing behind her and that the prophecy of the times was opening itself and more of the mystery and more of the stories that she carried were going to come to be. A time of actualization is amongst us. We can look at it as a crisis or we can look at it as an opportunity. I've just become a grandmother twice in the last three weeks and I really want my grandchildren to be able to look around and see the beauty on this planet. So if you have heard the call, explore a little further 
and let's get to know each other a little deeper. This I pray.